You are in the meeting now. Recording in progress. All right. Good morning. Um, who do we have? We have Post Plains and Sudan. Uh, how are y'all doing today? I got a thumbs up from a gentleman. I think this was a gentleman in the frontish row. Um, is that Plains? Yep, yep. Some students trickling in from Plains. Good morning, ladies. How are y'all today? Got your breakfast? You have something in your hand? No? Your coffee? Coffee? Yeah. Cheers. Um, let's see. Sudan. Um, or is it... Post that I see. Looks like we got a student crouching down, working on some work. Is that post? Black hoodie? Yes? All right. Um, it looks like Sudan is having some trouble connecting. Um, hopefully they will get on board. Um, so before we get formally started with... Um, today's class, um, let me just give you uh, a quick little uh, overview of what I hope to accomplish today. Um, on Monday, we just did a little intro, and I kind of explained what the expectations were for the week. Um, so at this point, you should have come, you should, you should be coming into this class having watch the lecture videos for assignment one and hopefully begun the homework uh, set for assignment one. Um, give me a thumbs up if you have at least watched the lecture videos and uh, let's start there. Have you all watched the lecture videos? Yes? Let me ask you a question. Did y'all do that in class on Tuesday, or did y'all do that just outside of class? Outside, outside of class. Outside of class. Outside of class? Okay. Um, so maybe you, maybe you probably already started the homework set, and maybe you have already finished it. That's great and fine. Um, but I want to spend some time today. Uh, if there's any lingering questions, um, from that assignment, I want to make sure to get those addressed. Um, and towards the end of class, I'm just going to uh, spend a little bit of time showing you what to expect um, when it comes to how to submit your work in Gradescope. Because what we're going to do on Friday towards the end of class, um, I'm going to have your facilitator pass out a quiz for um, 
basically it'll just be a quiz over assignment one. Um, but what I want us to be able to do is, um, once we're done with that quiz, uh, to be able to use our phone to scan and upload uh, the PDF file uh, of that quiz uh, into Blackboard. And I just want to give you a little bit of a heads up of how to do that. So we'll spend some time today just looking at that uh, together. Um, you can start to play with it. Um, outside of class um, as well. So let me just uh, start with, uh, say this is your opportunity to ask any questions over assignment one, over any problems that we want to look at. Anybody have any questions over assignment one? Any of the homework problems? Can twenty five? Did I hear twenty five? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Problem number 25. Let's make sure I get it written down correctly. Uh, we have 4x plus 13 minus open braces 2x minus open brackets Four open parentheses, x minus three, close parentheses, minus five, close bracket, close braces, equals two times uh, an x minus six. All right, so um, when we're looking at this particular problem, uh, what we want to do is we want to uh, start clearing out all of those uh, parentheses, brackets, parentheses, braces, and we want to um, work from the inside out. So when I'm looking at, at these braces right here, I'm looking at the inside of the braces, then I got some brackets, and then I have a set of parentheses. So the first thing I want to do is I want to clear out these parentheses, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take and distribute that four. So that's going to leave us with 4x plus 13 minus open bracket 2x minus open braces 4x minus 12. So we got rid of the parentheses, then minus 5, close bracket, close braces equals, and we can. Um, We can take and get rid of those parentheses by distributing the 2. So that's going to be 2x minus 12. All right, so continuing to um, work on clearing any phrases or print any nesting symbols, grouping symbols, um, I can combine like terms here. So we still got the 4x plus 13 minus open braces, 2x minus open bracket, 4x, 12, negative 12 minus 5 is a negative 17, close bracket, close braces equals 2x minus 12. 
now we can um, get rid of these brackets by distributing this negative sign. So that's going to give us a minus 4x plus 17 equals 2x minus 12. Um, are you with me so far? Hanging in there? Yes, sir. Uh, then I would get rid of the, uh, the, the braces by distributing this negative sign. Make sure, um, I guess before I do that, um, I combine these two terms. Uh, that would be and become a negative 2x. Now what I'll do is I'll just distribute that negative sign. So the negative sign goes to the negative 2x and to the 17. So we have 4x plus 13. The opposite of a negative is positive. Now, um, if you wanted to, you could have uh, at some point moved this 2x over to the other side and combined it with the 4x, but um, I like to simplify uh, the left and right hand side as much as possible before I do anything. So we got some like terms. The 4x and 2x can be combined together, and then the 13 and the negative 17 can be combined together. So 4x plus 2x is a 6x. 13 minus 17 is going to be a negative 4. And then we'll just go through and um, start moving things across the equal sign. So we'll subtract 2x on both sides. We'll add 4 on both sides. So 6x minus 2x is going to be 4x. So that's, that's going to cancel out, and that's going to cancel out. And then negative 12 plus 4 is going to be a negative 8. And then we can just go ahead and say, well, let's divide both sides by 4. And that is how we get x is equal to negative 2. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Now, um, just real quickly, uh, I didn't make a big deal about this um, when I went through and uh, went over Blackboard with y'all, but uh, you'll notice that um, you'll notice that um, you can check your work by looking at the assignment key. Did y'all see that? Did y'all notice that? Yes, no, maybe so. Yes, sir. Y'all know? Do what? Yes, sir. Y'all know? So, you know, the reason, so I just want to take a quick moment here. The, the reason that I give you the answer key um, is twofold. One, um, I don't grade the homework. I am not going to sit here and um, my life is just too crazy. Um, I'm not going to sit down and go through everybody's homework and grade it or even spend time grading five problems. Um, your participation comes from completing the homework. Um, well, 
what I do grade is your quizzes. So if you if you're doing the homework um, and you're doing it on your own and you're learning from it, then the quizzes shouldn't be a big deal. Um, and the other reason I give you the answers is I want to I want you to feel like um, um, I don't want there to be any question about um, did I get this right. Uh, if you complete the problem and you check your answer either by hand or come over here to the uh, key and you find that you got it right, um, hopefully that provides a boost of confidence and say, yay, I did it. Um, if you got it wrong, you can say, all right, what did I, did I do wrong? I need to go back and fix it. If you still can't get it right, well, that's what this time is for, to ask questions, to say, all right, something's happening here. I'm not quite getting this problem. I need help with it, so let's work it out together. That's why I give you the answer key. All right. Uh, any other questions over assignment one? Um, anybody? Um, number 16. 16. I'm glad you asked about 16 because I was about to ask how we were feeling about those fractions. Sixteen. Did I hear that correctly? Sixteen. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay. X plus 1 over 3 plus a 5 is equal to X minus 2 over 7. So what we want to do in this particular problem is we want to clear the equation of all fractions. Oh, y'all need to see what I'm doing. My bad. My apologies. What we want to do is we want to clear this equation of all fractions. We want to make the fractions go away. The way that we do that is we multiply the equation by the LCD. In this case, the LCD of, what are our denominators? 3 and 7. So anybody, what's the LCD? What's the other way to say LCD is least common multiple? What is the least common multiple of 3 and 7? 21. 21. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the entire equation and I'm going to multiply it by 21. So this is just like distributing. Um, we're going to distribute this 21 to every single term. Now, I'm going to take a moment, I'm just going to take an extra step to show you what this looks like. You're going to have a 21 over 1 times the x plus 1 over 3 plus the 21 times 5. Now, the reason I didn't put 21 over 1 is because um, I'm just multiplying 21 by 5. I'm not thinking about this in terms of fractions. Equals the 21 over 1 times the x minus 2 over 7. And here's what multiplying through by the LCD does. Because we're multiplying by a multiple of both 3 and 7 across the equation, the 21 up here can be divided by your denominator. So 21 divided by 3 is 7. Or you could say, well, what goes into both 21 and 3? Three? 3 does. So you're saying, well, 3 divided by 3 is 1, so we'll just cancel it out. 21 divided by 3 is 7. And then over here, the 21 gets divided by 7. 21 divided by 7 is 3. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 7 
and um, it, it'll be maybe I should have drawn these out but think about these in parentheses you're going to take that the 7 and it's going to distribute into the parentheses this 3 is going to distribute into our parentheses because when you multiply 21 by this whole entire term 21 has to multiply the x and the 1 then it would get divided by 3 well we're just taking care of the division part first and then distributing so before I move on is that let's 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 just take a look at what happens here 7 times x is 7x 7 times 1 is 7 21 times 5, well 5 times 20 is 100 and then 5 times 1 is 5 so that's going to be 105 is equal to 3 times x is 3x and then 3 times the negative 2 is negative 6. Alright. Getting to this point right here, are we all on board? Especially to the student that asked the question, are you you see where how I've gotten to this point? Yes, no, maybe so. Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs up. So now what I've done is I've taken an equation with fractions, and just by multiplying it through by the L C D I've gotten rid of the fractional terms. It's an equivalent it's an equivalent equation. We're going to get the same result, it just looks different than the original equation and I would say it looks nicer because I don't have any fractions to deal with. So how am I going to solve this? Um, let's see. I can take the 7 and the 105 and add them together. So that's going to be 7x um, plus a 1112 is equal to 3x minus 6 then we will um, subtract 3x, subtract 3x, subtract 112, subtract 112 let's see we get 4x is equal to a negative 118 Um, all right, I'm looking at the answer key and oh that's what it is alright so I'm looking at the answer key and the answer key says 52 over 5 and so already I'm looking at this and there's no way I'm going to get 52 over 5 does anybody see my mistake I see it. In the original problem, the 5 was on the other side of the equation. I miswrote, the, I miswrote this problem. The 5 was on the other side of the equation. So um, we can do some correction here. Um, let's do some correcting. Alright, so we want to erase that plus sign right there. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Um, so that equals and that should be a minus sign. Okay. Now does that look like the original equation? Should. So let's make some corrections here. Um, So that equals, there's a minus sign. Now this is going to affect a couple of things. Um, let me just erase uh, what we have here and here. You got to write the question down correctly if you want to get the right answer. 
All right, so fortunately, we don't have to change a whole lot of stuff. We just have to basically change some signs. We're still going to take that 7 and distribute it. So you're still going to get 7x plus 7 equals, now you have the 21 times 5, that's the 105. Now here's uh, a key uh, thought that you got to keep in mind. This subtraction sign right here in front of the 3 must distribute with the 3. So we're saying really what's negative 3 time distributing into the x minus 2. Make sure you distribute that negative sign with that 3. So you're going to get negative 3x and then negative 3 times the negative 2 is a positive 6. Okay, so that's going to lead us to the following. 7x plus 7 equals a negative 3x, um, and then 105 plus 6 is going to be a 111. Now, I, all right, so I want to make sure everybody's on board. I, I made a mistake initially. We've corrected it here. We wrote the qu equation down correctly, and we've made the correct, hopefully we've made the correct uh, adjustments. Everybody on board? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Thumbs up. So I think this is going to lead us to the right answer. Add 3x on both sides, subtract 7 on both sides, okay, I'm going to just move on up here, Let's get rid of this, so 7x plus 3x is going to be a 10x. 11, 111 minus 7 is going to be a 104, and there it is. When I go through and divide both sides by uh, 10, what we can do is we can simplify uh, 104 over 10 by dividing by 2 on the top and the bottom, and that is how we're going to get x is equal to a 52 over 5. Alright, so I apologize about the uh, initial mishap here. Uh, but does that make sense um, how we arrived at 52 over 5? Especially to the person that asked the question. I think you're sitting down somewhere, maybe in a green shirt. I don't know. Does that make sense? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Cool. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Does Any other questions from the homework that they want to go over? I'm sorry, what? If that was a question number, I, I couldn't tell what it was. You, you're cutting in and out. Any other questions over assignment one? So, let's see. Yeah, we. Any, any other questions? Um, twenty-three. 
equal to 8 minus 7x minus open bracket 6 divided by 3 open parentheses 2 plus 5 to the third close parentheses plus a 5x okay So what we want to do is we want to follow the order of operations to start simplifying mainly the uh, right-hand side of this equation. Now, when it comes to the order of operations, the first thing that we want to do is we want to take care of simplifying the inside of brackets and parentheses. So as I'm looking inside these brackets, I'm seeing this... Uh, 2 plus a 5 to the third. So, in parentheses, that's going to be 2 plus uh, 125. Now, that's still going to be in parentheses, and that's going to be a, a 127. So, you still have the 3 in front of it, the 6, that's going to be in brackets, and plus the 5x. Now, I don't know if, I'm not going to assume that y'all did this, but here's a very common mistake that I would probably note. You wanted to get rid of the parentheses by multiplying. How many of y'all multiplied that 3 first? Did y'all multiply the 3 into parentheses? You're not supposed to. And here's why. When we talk about the order of operations, P, E, M, D, A, S, we always think about how multiplication and division are one thing, um, and addition and subtraction are one thing. You always multiply, divide as you see it from left to right, and you always add, subtract as you see it from left to right. So in this problem, we have 6 divided by 3 times a 127. Well, a 6 divided by 3 occurs first. So we're going to have 2 times, because that's what 6 divided by 3 is, 2 times the 127 plus 5x. And then that becomes, here's my minus sign, 2 times 127 is going to be a 254 uh, plus 5x. That's what's inside my bracket. still have the 8 minus 7x. Now, I've simplified the inside of my bracket. Now what we want to do is we want to distribute the minus sign. So we have 8 minus 7x minus a 254 minus 5x Add that 5 minus 12x on the other side. Okay, let's see what happens here. Um, like terms, we can combine the negative 7x and the negative 5x on both sides, on the left-hand side. And I can combine the 8 and the negative 254. So I have 5 minus 12x is equal to, all right, 
negative 7x minus 5x is going to be a negative 12x. And then 8 combined with a negative 254 is going to be a negative 246. Uh, now, looking at the answer key, the answer key says the answer is no solution. And I can see why it's no solution right here, and I hope you can too. Notice that you have a negative 12x and a negative 12x on the same on each side of the equation. Same term. And what's about to happen is they're going to cancel each other out. Watch this. If you want to think about getting your x's on one side, look what happens. If you add 12x to both sides, these cancel out. And all you're left with is 5 is equal to a negative 246. So this is a false statement. We don't have any variables in here. All we have is this is saying that 5 is equal to negative 246. Well, that certainly is a false statement. It's not true. So anytime that you have a false statement, that means that you are dealing with a equation that has no solution. This equation has no solution. Now, the perhaps the tricky part in this um, you know, really, um, even if you uh, happen to have messed up dealing with uh, the parentheses and maybe you did uh, distribute it three first and then six divide, um, the nice thing about this is if you look up here, here's that minus 7x. If you distributed that minus sign correctly, that becomes a negative 5x. Negative 7x, negative 5x gives you your negative 12x. And there you have those two negative 12x's on both sides of the equation. They're going to cancel out. So even if you had done this problem, and who knows, maybe I got it wrong. Maybe even if this number right here, 246, was incorrect, you didn't get that number, it doesn't matter. Because you still have this issue with the variable terms canceling out. Does that make sense? Thumbs up, thumbs down. All right. Um, one thing that will be helpful to me, uh, I when I'm finish a question and I ask, hey, how are we doing? Does that make sense? Um, one, either use their microphones. I love it when people use their microphones so long as they're working. Um, if your microphone's shy and don't want to use it, um, use big gestures, like really big thumbs up. Because what I have right here is I have a little bitty monitor, and it's broken up into four different segments. It's like uh, the Brady Bunch. And so I get these really big, you know, not great pictures of you in the classroom. And so it's hard to, for me to see a head nodding up and down or a thumbs up close to the chest. So when I say how y'all doing, you're doing good. If you have a if you're doing good, you know, raise your hand up with the thumbs up so that way I can at least tell, oh, okay, I see I can see the thumbs up. Don't don't be like, yeah, I'm doing good. Because I can't see what this looks like. Alright. Um I want to take a moment um, if you got any questions, remaining questions, hopefully we have some time to tackle those. But I want to take a moment to um, show you what you're going to encounter on Friday. Friday is our first quiz. 
Um, we'll begin class, much like we did today, answering questions over assignment two. Um, the quiz that you all have on Friday will only be over assignment one. I do not give quizzes uh, over the material that we are talking about that day. Um, it, it would be unfair of me to give you a quiz over assignment two on Friday as if you have lingering questions over assignment two. So I want to make sure all your questions are answered for assignment two um, before I quiz you over assignment two. So we're only going to have a quiz over assignment one. What's going to happen is um, you will be facilitators. If you're chiming in, I'm going to be emailing you later today um, and at the latest early, early tomorrow um, with some information, but you're going to receive a quiz from your facilitator. My plan is that you should have enough room on this sheet of paper to complete the quiz on, on your sheet of paper. Uh, if you need to use that additional paper, that's fine. Um, just make sure that you turn it in um, with your work. What you're going to do is you're going to use your phone. Um, so. Hopefully there's not an issue with your school's policies about cell phone stuff. Um, tell them that you're taking a college level class and this is an exception. Um, but you need to have downloaded a, an app like Cam Scanner or Scannable or some sort of app that converts uh, physical files, paper files into PDF format. Um, and what I would do if I was you, I would, I would play around with that app before Friday's class. Um, I'm going to give you all some time to at least experience it on Friday so it won't be so um, um, there will be a learning curve for this on Friday. But here's what you're going to do. Um, in Blackboard, once you're done your, your quiz, so we're going to go ahead and log into Blackboard. And I'm going to um, see. I'm going to log in under a different account so that y'all see what I see. Um, hold on, just a second. All right. There we go. Okay. So we're in Blackboard. Um, we're going to be under the course content. We're going to go to week one. Now tomorrow during class, um, there's going to be a new, um, I call these drop boxes. Uh, these icons with the little grade scope, the bar graph icon is where you uh, submit your work. There's going to be a new one starting tomorrow for the quiz, but let's pretend like we're doing week one assignments. You're going to click this link, and what it's going to do is it's going to, it's going to take you to a, um, oh, let's shoot. Hold on just a second. I gotta, I gotta close out some stuff. Okay, let's let's back out again. Let's back out again. Um, all right, let's go back to Blackboard. Um, Hold on. Sorry, I gotta log out. There we go. Right. Okay. Let's get back to where I was at. Alright, so back to course content, week one. 
All right, so when you click the, on the week one assignments, all right, hopefully this is going to work. Yes, all right. Now, you, when you log in the uh, Blackboard and go through the same steps that I just did, you can find the same thing. And what we have right here is week one notes and homework. Now, this is just showing you your status. You haven't submitted anything yet. And this bar over here is kind of telling you, um, it's kind of like a countdown. When do you got, when do you got to get this done? And week one assignments are due September 22nd, or um, oh September 5th at 11:59. Um, if you turn it in after that, um, you're going to get a penalty. So. The late due date. Uh, the first little point up here is the actual due date, and this is the late due date. I, I don't really like that wording, um, but you can get credit if you turn it in late. But here's what you're going to do. Uh, we're going to do this together. There we go. Um, when you click this link, uh, a couple of things are going to happen. One, you can download Week 1 Notes and Homework PDF. And all that is is just telling you what you got to submit. Submit your work as a single PDF file for the following. Assignment 1, Notes and Homework. Assignment 2, Notes and Homework. And when you're ready to submit, you're going to click the Submit PDF. And you're going to uh, select a PDF file. So on your computer or on your phone, um, I'm operating on my iPad, so it's a little bit different here. Upload PDF, select PDF file. All right, so when I did that, um, I can browse my photo library or I can browse uh, my files on my computer um, and that sort of thing. I would suggest that you do this on a laptop or a personal computer rather than on an iPad or cell phone just because the file structures but um, that's how we go through and submit our work. So again tomorrow or not tomorrow, but on um, oh, hold on. <laughs> uh, let's see. This is what happens when I start playing around with buttons. Hold on, give me just a second to get this situated correctly. All right, um, I, I, I messed this up. Um, and I'll have to play around with it in a little bit, but tomorrow, not I'm not tomorrow, but Friday, um, you're going to get the quiz in class, and you're going to do the quiz in class, and you're going to submit your quiz uh, to me through Blackboard during our class time. Does that make sense? So we'll run through that process on uh, Friday. So, we have about five minutes remaining. Are there any other questions that someone wants to uh, ask about? Anybody have any other questions over assignment one? All right, well, let me take 
the last bit of class. Um, let's see. And what I want to do is I want to give you a preview of, if you haven't done so already, um, if you have, awesome. If you haven't, here is a little preview of assignment two. So uh, the nice thing about assignment one, these problems 10 through 16, and assignment one that all deal with fractions, the process that we went through here to get rid of fractions is going to be the same process that we use in assignment two. The only difference about assignment two is that you're going to have variables in the denominator. So let's just pick a pretty straightforward problem. Your conference is scheduled to end in two minutes. Now, you know what? Two minutes is not enough time. Um, so we're not going to deal with that. We're not going to go over assignment two. Um, that's your job to do between now and Friday. Work on, watch the lecture videos for assignment two, work on the notes, begin working on the homework, and then that way you can come to class on Friday with questions over assignment two. So, if there's not anything else, um, I am formally dismissing class for today. Um, hopefully I can get these camera set it up the way it's supposed to be. So y'all have a good day and uh, see you on Friday. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Take care. Bye. Yeah, anything, anyway, email me. It's like, it'll be like, okay, you said you're, you're paying attention. And then on Friday, Allie, if you sit behind and he can see all three of you, and just we don't want to give you any excuse to think anything different about us. Just an FYI, whoever was speaking, I think it was a facilitator, uh, somebody's microphone. Your is conference on. is now over. Goodbye. Just an FYI. <laughs>